What have you got us here for today, Ricky? What's what's the uh, what are you going to tell us? Well, I think you know most of the reason. Um, I think with John and Verdi, uh announcing this the one day squad for the next couple of games, um, you know, obviously I've, I've been left out of that and dropped from uh, the one day international team, which uh, which I'm disappointed about. But um, but life life goes on for me. Uh, I totally understand the reasons behind me being left out of the side. My performances over the last five games hasn't haven't warranted me staying in the team. So. Uh, I've been left out of that, and um, John's made it pretty clear the reasons why and the direction that they want to take with the, the one-day team going forward. You will continue playing test cricket? I'll continue playing test cricket, yeah, and I'll uh, continue playing cricket for Tasmania as well. So, um, you know, I, I think I proved to myself and everybody else that I'm still capable of dominating test cricket as I did in the last series against against India, and I'm looking forward to uh, to getting back and, and playing the last couple of shield games for Tasmania this year, and then heading to the West Indies, hopefully with uh, some runs under my belt. But Ricky, you've, uh, you've had lean patches before in the one day arena. Did they pull the trigger too early in this instance, do you think? Were they a bit premature? Oh, look, at the end of the day, I, I'm my best selector. If I'd have scored runs in these five games, then obviously I wouldn't have been dropped. Um, so I've left the door open for them to make the decision that they've made yesterday. Um, that's the way I'm looking at it. Um, yeah, the reason I'm disappointed about about getting dropped is of, of how much I actually love representing my country and playing playing cricket for Australia. Um, you know, I've got no bitterness at all at what's happened. Uh, I totally understand the reasons why, and you know the, the national selection panel are, are looking forward to building a team for the next World Cup, of which um, you know right at the moment and probably going forward, I'm not part of their plans, which I which I understand. But it does thin out your involvement at the top level, doesn't it? You're going to have sporadic international cricket now. Is that going to happen? You? That's something I have to manage. Uh, I've had a, bit, a little bit of a chance to think about that over the last uh, the last 12 hours. Um, you know, this is all pretty pretty rushed and something I've never really had to think much about before. But as international cricketers, you're you're always trying to find the best way to prepare for each game that you play, and quite often it's not always perfect preparation. So, um, you know, once. Uh, uh, now, well, with the two Shield games that I've got before the West Indies tour, it's important that I spend as much time as I can around the Tasmanian team and get the, the training required and preparation required and play, the, play those games well and, and then go to the Caribbean. And, and once again, when we get back from there, it'll be back into a, a pre-season, maybe even with my club team, Mo, Break Cricket Club, back in Tassie. They might see a bit more of me as well. And, uh, but a pre-season with Tasmania to make sure I'm ready to go at the start of uh, the next Australian summer. Tony, Ricky, um, so does this mean that uh, you're not effectively retiring for one day cricket season? Uh, yeah, look, John made it very clear to me yesterday um, the direction that they, they are heading with the one day team um, and that I'm not part of their plans. So, look, it's a little bit hard to come here today and say I'm, I'm retiring when I've, I've already been left out of the side. So, um, yeah, I, I don't expect to play one day international cricket for Australia anymore, and I, I'm pretty sure the selectors uh, don't expect to have to pick me on. Um, look, I'm still firmly of the belief that I've got a lot to offer any cricket team that I play in and any team that I'm a part of. Um, you know, with the Indian Test Series going the way that it did for me only a few weeks ago, um, you know, reinforce that I've, I still have what it takes to be, a, as I said, a dominant player at international level in the Test arena. So. Um, did the thought come into my mind? The, the, the thing that I thought about most yesterday was just how I was going to manage my time um, and to be well prepared to play every test match that I play uh, for the remainder of my career. Um, that obviously now with no one day international cricket that becomes a little bit more difficult for me but uh, there are other players around Australia at the moment that play test match cricket only and I've seen it in the past with you know, with Steve Waugh and, and Mark Taylor and David Boone and those guys when they had uh, retired from one day cricket. Um, you know, they, they managed to, to play test match cricket only and play it well. So, um, yeah, I've got some things that I've got to look at and, and work out, but no, I'm, I'm really excited um, now to get the chance to play a couple of games for Tassie and then um, see whatever, um, how many more test matches I can play for Australia. Do you want to kick your time? Steve Moore had a farewell to it. I four tests, obviously. He retired from the game. So, Mark Moore played until he got dropped. Where do you see your career ending in that speech? Uh, I haven't had a lot of time to think about that just yet. I mean, this is, as I said, this has all happened, you know, really quickly for me. And um, the passion for the international game of cricket for me has not died or changed one little bit. And I've made it very clear right through the, the Australian summer this year that I still don't see a finish line um, as far as my international career is concerned. And, you know, it's probably now that one day cricket uh, isn't there anymore, um, 
you know, we all know that that day is coming closer and closer for me. But look, I, I, I don't think I'm the sort of person that's going to want to have a, a massive farewell series. I'll, I'll make a decision when I when I think that I can't um, contribute to winning games of cricket for Australia, and that's all that's been motivating me for the last 12 months is to to be the player that I know I can be and to do the best that I can for the Australian cricket team and, and try and win games of cricket. And when that when those feelings, if you like, die off, then it'll be time for me to hang up the boots. So Ricky, it, do, it, it seems it doesn't worry you that you might be told when your test career is over, rather than you walking away in your own terms. It, that, it doesn't seem to worry you that that might be the scenario, scenario you'll end up with. Well, I thought a little bit about that yesterday afternoon when I found out about being dropped from this side. And I've always been of the belief that I don't mind people trying things and failing. You know, and that's the way I'm looking at it as well. I, I tried my best over the last five games to, to be the best player that I could be and, and to win games cricket for Australia. Unfortunately, I couldn't do that and I failed. And um, you know, I've been dropped from the one-day side. But to tell you the honest truth, I, I didn't actually really see, see this coming either. I had no communication from the selectors that it might have happened um, through, this, through this series. But at the end of the day, as I said, it's my job as an international batsman to score runs and I haven't done that in the, in the last few games. Can you be too proud about this? Only if it ends badly, um, but I'm backing myself to be to to finish the game and finish my career on a high. I don't want to finish on a low, um, and I think I've, I'll make the right decision at the right time. There's no doubt about that. Um, no, that's an option. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not retiring from. I'm not not going to play all forms of of one day cricket. Um, you know. The, I've got some stuff to think about even on this weekend with a rugby cup final coming up on Saturday. So I've got a bit of thinking to do there and a bit of communication to do with the, the Tasmanian coaches and players. But um, yeah, once again, I need to be to be playing as much cricket as I can to be well prepared for, for every game that I play. But with uh, me now only playing uh, test match cricket, international test match cricket, then you know, for next summer, for instance, if there happen to be some Ryobi Cup games immediately before a test match or between test matches, then I'd, I'd obviously look at taking that opportunity to play those games. You mentioned you were recognised yesterday. Is it the biggest surprise given the fact that Johnny Brewer said he actually rang you about the captaincy before those two games and you weren't jumping at it? You said you did it between them and then two games later right they dropped. Yeah, well, that's exactly what happened. I was, I was reluctant to take on the captaincy. Um, for the reasons that other guys have been named vice captain, I thought there was an opportunity there for for David Warner in particular to um, to get a bit of uh, experience in what it's like to actually lead a cricket team. But they were reluctant to do that, and I think John's explained the reasons why. Um, so that really just left me um, with a decision to make whether I wanted to do it. And I honestly felt deep down that it was best for the team that I took that role on and tried to get the team through the next, the, the last couple of games in the best in the best way possible. So, um, you know, with the amount of experience that I had, it was probably a pretty easy decision. I mean, I captained nearly 170 games, so it was going to come a bit easier to me than it was going to come to someone that had never captained international cricket before. So, yeah, look, I, I took that on, um, you know, almost put my neck on the line a little bit for the for the team, but that's what I've always done and that's what I always continue to do. Um, Ricky, given that there's a significant gap between the end of the Caribbean Tour and the start of the next test against uh, South Africa, is counting cricket um, look, once again, I haven't had a chance to think about that either. And I, to be totally honest, I think most of the county sides that already have their international players signed in and locked in for next season anyway. I mean, their season starts in a couple of months. So um, there's all sorts of things I've got, got, got to consider. Um, probably at the moment, that's an outside chance for me to go and play county cricket. But yeah, there's no doubt that I need to be as well prepared as possible for, um, I think it's the start of November when the Test Series in, in Australia starts. But I'll have, I'll have a, a good opportunity to play a number of first class games for Tasmania hopefully before the, the, test, uh, the test season next summer. Was there any point yesterday where you could just give me a roll away? Um, no, I just had to have a look at and assess um, how easy or how hard it was going to be for me uh, in the immediate future with how much cricket I had on or didn't have on. Um, <clears throat> as I said, I expected more of myself in this one day series. I expected to be uh, to be able to score enough runs to um, to keep myself in the one day side, you know, for the certainly for the Caribbean tour, and then hoping hoping into England. If I had have done that, then I, you know, I wouldn't have had to think about giving the game away altogether because I had plenty of cricket before before next summer. But um, you know, now that international one day cricket's not there, what I have left is is Test match cricket, and I'll make sure that I'm as well prepared as possible to play every game and, and make the most of every opportunity that I get. And have you worked out what's the, technically what's the reason behind the slump in the form in the one day game? 
after such a good test series? Oh, I don't think it's been anything technically. I think, um, as, I, as I made pretty clear the other night in Brisbane, I, I think, you know, my, my body has been able to get through um, the rigours of this summer really well, and I think my mind's just been a little bit behind where my body's been. And when you're not um, as sharp as you need to be at international level, then uh, you can expect that you're not going to play as well as you like it either. So that's sort of the, that's sort of the way I felt. I mean, the, the thing with the, the test summer for me is, Yes, I spent a lot of time in the middle, and yes, I made a lot of runs, but the work I had to do outside of that to get my, to get my game back to where it was towards the end of the Test Series was, you know, as I've made clear to everybody, I've had to work harder than, than ever in my career, and, and I worked harder than everybody else in the Australian team right through the, the last 12 months. So at some stage, that was going to catch up with me, and uh, I think um, just being that you know, not quite as sharp as I needed to be at the start of the one-day series has had, um, you know, played a bit of a, a part in, in why I haven't scored those runs. Ricky, I think if you went around the room today, a significant percentage uh, were probably thinking that this could be the big announcement. <laughs> is, there, is there a pressure in defying the, the, uh, the critics and the age barrier? Is that a motivating factor? I actually thought that today that I might have been letting a lot of you people down when I turned up this morning and said that I was going to continue playing Test Match Cricket. I thought you might have had some stories already written overnight about um, what my career has been like. but. Uh, is there a challenge to keep defying the critics? Is that what your question was? Yeah, challenge to keep defying the sort of that age barrier. It's never been about defying anybody. It's been about being the best that I can be and winning games of cricket for Australia. Um, you know, yes, I got a lot of satis satisfaction out of the summer this year because I proved to myself and I proved to my teammates that that I can win games for Australia. And I, I didn't, I didn't. You know, criticism is always going to come your way as an international player. Everyone understands that and everybody accepts that. And. I've never been too big for criticism and I guess over the last few years I've, I've cupped, copped a little bit but I've always copped it on the chin and tried to make myself better as a result of that and that's the way I've lived my life and that's the way I've played my cricket and I'll continue to do that until I finish. Jim, Ricky, Ricky, Jim Wilson from the 7 Network, can I ask you two things? Firstly, was there any point late or late yesterday or last night after the handling of this whole thing with the National Selection Panel that you contemplated just pulling the pin completely? Uh, no, not really, not really, Jim. I, I had a lot of thinking to do, and I had a lot of thinking to do in a short period of time because this has all happened really quickly for me, and, and as I said, it probably came out of the blue and was a little bit unexpected, but um, my love and passion for the game has not wavered at all, um, and even you know, being, being dropped from the, the Australian cricket team hasn't changed the way I think about the Test game. Um, I've always been a traditionalist. I, I've loved uh, every opportunity I've had of playing cricket for Australia, whether it be one day cricket, 2020 cricket or Test cricket. For me now, all I've got left is Test cricket, and I want to make every post a winner with that, and make sure that that um, every time I have a chance to play for Australia, I'm the best prepared I can be, and I enjoy every moment. The second part of my question is: If you were giving away, if One Day Cricket was finished, why did you feel the need and the compulsion in to hold this today? As far as if if your One Day Cricket was gone as we knew yesterday, did, did you feel a great need or compulsion to call this media conference to say you were going on in Test cricket? Uh, that and yeah, just to. to uh, talk you through all the scenarios and questions I've answered this morning. Yeah, I think it, I thought it was really important to to let everybody know, uh, not only in the media world but in in the, the cricket loving public of Australia, what my thoughts and feelings are on on my career going forward and and some of the things I guess that I've probably achieved in the one day game. Um, you know, I also you know want to have a bit of closure on the whole thing as well. On on um, you know that's what it is for me. It's real. It's closure on my one day international career, but certainly not closure on my international career. Ricky, what, what is what is the, the carrot? Is it another ashes? What is? There's got to be a goal. There's got to be a, a target. That's just my love for the game. I just love the game, um, and I love every opportunity, every moment I get to play and represent my country. Um, you know, one thing I've always been conscious of is not letting my teammates down, not letting my country down. And you know, as long as I can keep playing, and I feel like I'm not holding better players out of the Australian cricket team, then um, you know, as I said, I'm not going to, I'm not just going to keep playing and dragging myself through times where I don't feel like I can play great cricket. And I think, as I said, and I'll keep coming back to it. I, I proved to a lot of people this summer that I can, I can still play great cricket for Australia and, and be as good as anybody out there on the cricket field. So. That's what I'm planning to do for the next period of time. How long that is, I don't know. But, you know, look, it'd be great to get back to the Ashes. If I'm a good enough player uh, to do that, then it'd be great to be able to go back there one more time and hopefully have a few better memories than what I've had in England the last couple of tours. You're after redemption, aren't you? Everybody is, as far as Ashes cricket's concerned. Was, uh, was the wife saying, like, you were late saying, like, the double fun, like, also, did you talk to anyone else about 
this summary from about the test cricket, uh, whether to stay off, was that a wide decision by him? What was your wife's reaction? Um, well, Rihanna straight away um, felt that she was going to have me home more and then I was going to be around more, but then I told her that I've got some state cricket to play in the next couple of weeks and all of a sudden she was a little bit deflated by the whole thing. So, um, no, nah, look, uh, she's obviously in my corner. She'll back every decision I ever make as far as, uh, as, far as cricket's concerned. She's really only known one way of life since we've been together and that's uh, me being on the road a lot and me being away every other day playing cricket or, or training and preparing for a game of cricket. So, you know, in the immediate future, nothing's really changed there. Um, and what was the second part of your question? Over the summer, did you ever talk to any of the other circuit players, retired players, about whether you should keep playing cricket? No, because I didn't want any of them to try and talk me into retiring. Basically, it was a major reason why. I talked to a lot of people through the summer about my cricket and about my batting um, and about where, where I was going and where I wanted to go. But um, that was mainly, mainly coaches and, and you know, very close friends of mine about how I could turn things around. That was all I was focusing on. I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about retiring. I think if, I, if I had been thinking about retiring, then yeah, I would have asked some questions to some of those guys. Um, you know, the Haydens and the Gilchrist and the McGraths, those guys that have all that are all very close friends of mine that have retired from international cricket you know, re relatively recently, then I would have spoken to them. But it wasn't on my mind, so all that was on my mind was trying to be a better player. Sorry, Daniel Brett, does this scenario now mean that, um, you, know, you mentioned about your mind maybe being a little bit behind your body, does this allow you to really reflect on what you want to do yeah, it, it could do that. Um, I mean, there's two trains of thought. There's two ways you can look at that. Am I better off, um, you know, having momentum behind me with playing more cricket, um, you know, and, and scoring runs on a consistent basis? So am I better off getting away for long periods of time, freshening up, training hard, getting my game in good shape, and then going away and playing? I won't know that until I guess um, the start of next summer. You know, if I make it that far, that I won't know until then because uh, I won't have to. I won't have uh, had a chance to to see how that all works. So I'm not. You know, I won't have a long break now, as I said, with a couple of Shield games to play. There'll be a couple of weeks probably after, um, or there'll be a week after the Shield final. Um, uh, hopefully Tasmania can make it through the Shield final and then, you know, I'll have a week at home and then to the West Indies and we're straight into a tour game and, and test matches there. So, you know, right at the moment there's not a lot of time to, to think about that stuff. But, you know, post, post West Indies when there's a big break between then and, and November, that'll be a real test of, of how I manage my time well. Any highlights, favourite memories from your one day careers? Oh, look, I've been I've been blessed to play as much as I have. You know, 300 and, was it 75 games in or 76 games or something. That's you know, and I don't I don't think of myself as being lucky to have played that many games because I like to think I've sacrificed enough and worked hard enough to give myself to, you know, the chance to play every one of those games. But I've been lucky to be a part of um, you know a lot of great teams and you know to play in five World Cups. You know to play in to play in four World Cup finals. Obviously they're very very fond memories. To play the uh, the two thousand um, uh, the two thousand and what was it two thousand and three World Cup. Um, you know to go through that undefeated and to have some success in the final was uh, was amazing. Um, that that to date for me. I, and I saw some highlights last night. Actually that I sat up in a press conference then, then and said that that was the the best moment of my cricket life and to date it, it probably still is. Um, you know, some of the things we've achieved as a one day team since I've been in the team has been uh, been pretty remarkable. So, uh, you know, through two World Cups undefeated, I think we at one stage won maybe 20 consecutive games somewhere around there of one day international cricket. Um, those, those things don't happen every day. So, yeah, I've been, I've been you know, really lucky to, uh, to be able to achieve those things in the game. Ricky, the selectors have shown a little bit of a ruthless streak in this instance. Do you expect a similar treatment if you don't come up with the goods at pretty much every innings from now on in the test arena? Um, well, that's the great challenge for me. Everybody understands where they sit now in the Australian cricket team. And I think in international sport, you know, if you're not performing for you know a, a short period of time now, you're a chance to be left out of the side, and that's the way it should be. Um, look, I think the selectors are doing a great job around the around the team at the moment. Um, they've, they've brought in some, some younger, fresher faces, which I think was, was needed. They've had um, the courage, I guess, to, to try some of those guys that might not necessarily have been the best performed players around state cricket as well. And um, So the ball's always in my court. As far as selection is concerned, the players are always their only selector. If you're a batsman and you're scoring runs, you're going to stay on the side. If you're a batsman and you're not scoring runs, you're a chance to be left out. Was the summer affirmation that you still had it? Your 500 plus runs? Yeah. yeah, hopefully, yeah. I mean, that's probably as good a three test match series as I've had. Yeah, um, so, right through my career, there's probably not been many more when I've scored 
more runs than that. So um, there's some real positives there for me to, at the end of the um, of the end of the test series this year. Unfortunately, those positives didn't carry over into the one day um, side of things. I wish they had. Uh, I wouldn't be here doing this today if they had. But um, yeah, there's still plenty to look forward to as far as I'm concerned um, with my test career. Uh, Ricky, you've um, you, you've said yourself there's question of the mind being able to keep up with the body and you've been like a spring chicken most of the summer but the, the word fatigue um, or fatigue, is that sort of really what comes into play now? You haven't really uh, felt that this summer and the end has really caught up with you. The second uh, question is relating to what John and Verity has been saying about your, your role uh, with the younger players coming through in terms of nurturing and the mentoring role you play in the background and the dressing room etc. What's the unfinished business there with the young players coming through? Um, look, the first part of your question, I think it's pretty fair to say that, that, that all the guys, that, and not just me, all the guys that have had big test summers um, and have you know, gone straight into to one day cricket, uh, at some stage you're going to start feeling the pinch. Um, you know, a few guys have been given a rest through the one day series already, which I thought was vital at the start of the one day series. I think one thing that we've learnt through um, Australian summers over the last five or six years is that the important time for the Australian one day team to be peaking is at the, is towards the end of the one day series and not at the start. Um, so the, you know the selectors are obviously doing their best to try and manage those players through that but you know the, you can see you can see it in a few of our performances a couple of you know a couple of weeks ago Adelaide and and Sydney here the other night that they were performances that were uncharacteristic of an Australian cricket team and you've got to start looking deeper into the reasons why those some of those performances happened and um, yeah, there's no doubt that some of the players are feeling the pinch, but you know, I've done my best to, to look after myself and manage myself as good as I can through the summer and through the one days, and um, I've tried to exert as much energy and as much enthusiasm as I can around the group because I think that's a, you know, a really big part of what I can bring to the team. So, you know, once again, I've just done the best that I could to to make sure that the team was um, in the best shape and had the best vibe and energy around the group as possible. Right, Ricky. Um Despite what John said to you yesterday, did you believe personally there was still enough room for you in the one day side based on your, your flawless fielding and, and, and your mentoring role on field in the hope that your, your, your batting form would get a little bit? Oh, from my point of view, yeah, of course. <laughs> of course I felt there was still room in the team for me, but... Um, no, look, at the end of the day, as I said, if I made runs, I stayed in the team. I didn't make runs, so um, when you don't make runs in five consecutive games, you understand that there's an opportunity there for for selectors to leave you out, but um, yeah, look, I, I've done my best um, to give myself the best chance to do that. I've done my best to make sure that every young player that comes in the team has got a great understanding of what it means to play cricket for Australia and what, uh, what levels they have to get themselves to physically and mentally to be good international players. And I think a few of the guys that we had come into the, the setup at the start of the one day series this, this year were quite shocked and, and surprised about how hard we work around the team and just how fit you need to be to, to be a part of the Australian side. So. Um, I think now that now that I'm not there, then there's some of the other more experienced guys have got to start passing those traditions, if you like, onto the younger blokes. Last one from the boys. Um, uh, Ricky, uh, John Verity said yesterday the door was never closed on anyone. <coughs> Is that the same for you? If Australia, however unlikely it seems now, I'm calling in the future, would you consider playing one day? Uh, I, don't ex I don't expect to be recalled um, into the one day side. Um, John made it pretty clear to me yesterday that he doesn't expect um, for me to be playing one day cricket again, so that's where that's where it is for me. Um, I think it'd have to take four or five guys to go down in this one game in Hobart on Friday for me to be even considered um, again. But you know, I, I don't think I'd be considered, and that's the way that I'm approaching it, and that's the way that's and I that sits comfortably with me. Thank you very much, Ricky, and um, we're grateful for your time. Just a couple of bits of housekeeping. Uh, we're now going to allow Ricky to leave, um, and, and we'll exit in a moment. In about five or ten minutes' time, James Sutherland will appear just to reflect on Ricky's one day career. So if you can hang around, we'll be back in around five minutes. Thank you. Thanks, Ricky. <coughs> Thank you. Thanks, Ross. Thank you. I might say, if you want to come to the center, I'm going to go that way.